Hey guys, want to give you a good overview of what we're looking at with our online material as we get back in the swing of things this semester. I know that online learning can be frustrating for a lot of people, um, but it's one of those things that you get out of it what you put into it. And with an open mind uh, and ability to pace yourself and create a schedule uh, to handle your coursework, you can be successful and find that it can be rather enjoying. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be doing in line. The first part you're going to be able to see is that we're going to be using Moodle as our primary component for class uh, in the summer semester for most of our online lecture or didactic material. Uh, we'll still continue to move forward with labs and simulations on campus um, with a schedule uh, as noted in the syllabi. It's important to point out that even though we're going to be meeting face to face, um, a lot of the learning we're going to do is going to remain online. And so your ability to stay plugged in and stay connected um, needs to make sure that it exists beyond the uh, walls of the classroom as well. Um, so on our Moodle page, we're going to start with EMT 230 Paramedic Advanced Practice. The Paramedic Advanced Practice Moodle is going to be our primary page for program communication, just as we've used Paramedic 2 and Paramedic 1 in the past. Um, on here, you'll know that there's a little bit different of format to Moodle uh, on the Moodle Live, uh, and that's because of an upgrade version. It gives us some new uh, capabilities and some new features. Um, also, is a little bit cleaner of an interface uh, for you guys to navigate as well. The course material remains the same. Um, I definitely think it's important that you have a chance to make contact with me, especially as we do distance learning. So again, call or text uh, and email is a great way to get in communication with me if you have specific questions or need specific help. I'll also have virtual office hours on Tuesday and Thursdays. So as we take a look at our course, we can take a look here at the course syllabi and, uh, and course schedule. This will be a great place for us to get started on a lot of the questions that you guys are having. Um, questions you can see uh, are going to be related to a specific course. It's going to lay out information about what's going on with your class, when we're meeting, um, what the course description, course goals, and outcomes are for the program. One of the areas that I feel that it's most important to recognize is uh, the requirements that we need as far as um, text and also for um, uh, computer requirements. Uh, in order for distance or online learning to work, you got to have the right tools. And so there's two primary forms of software that we're going to utilize that you'll need to either update or make sure you have on your device. And that's obviously EMS Testing's Platinum Secure product. Uh, and that's available for a multitude of uh, tablets and iOS and Android platforms, along with um, Mac and uh, Windows interface. It's also important that you have the ability to um, deal with Adobe documents. Um, so we want you to download Adobe uh, Document Reader. Um, and again, there's a link for both of those there for you to download. The third application we'll use is Zoom. It's free to sign up. Most of you are already familiar with this. Equipment. There's not much that we're going to need for equipment for most classes. Uniform shirt, uh, t-shirt to Zoom meetings, because uh, you will have the camera on and we'll, we'll be recording those sessions. But uh, beyond that, we also want to make sure that um, you enjoy yourself, be comfortable. Uh, you don't have to wear your uniform while you're doing your online work or online lessons. One of the areas that we know that uh, students uh, in distance or online learning struggle is uh, in being connected with their instructor. And so I think it's important for us to lay a foundation of good communication um, in a multitude of ways, face-to-face uh, -face with our labs and simulation, uh, and then online face-to-face uh, -face interaction with video conferencing software of Zoom or Google Hangouts, um, and then using our, our tools that we have as well for adaptive testing and Moodle to go beyond those. But in essence, the key here is the, the foundation for that is good communication. So. Um, it's important to know that announcements are going to be posted in Moodle on a regular basis. They're going to appear right on your dashboard. You want to make sure that you check them regularly because they're going to contain important information about projects or class concerns. For paramedic program overall announcements, you'll see us use the paramedic advanced practice page, but you may also have course specific announcements as well. So make sure you're watching those Moodle announcement pages as we move forward. The other part is that is email. Um, we want to make sure that we are able to use email or, in this case, messaging on Moodle. It's a great way uh, to communicate with each other for quick, short answers. It's easy done with a Moodle app. Um, and when you do submit things, we want you to do it in a very specific format, um, I, primarily just so I don't lose track of where all this information is coming from. And then you can also post your questions into the question forum, and that's a great place for you to ask questions to your classmates. I will issue uh, extra credit points for those that answer those questions uh, posted in the question forum as well. It's a great way to get some easy points uh, just by staying plugged in. Don't submit anything of uh, assignment wide by message or email. I need to make sure that goes directly into the submission box in Moodle. And then again, make sure you check your messages frequency. That's important. We want you to obviously, if the, you're going to have regular questions about what's going on, I expect that. 
because of this, I want you to make sure that you post questions first in the question forum, and that's going to be the place where other students have the ability to earn that extra credit points up to five points extra credit. I want you guys to have that feedback with each other uh, to begin with, just like we would in class. We also have a discussion forums, and those are going to be ways in which we can actually engage with each other and talk about content. There's going to be some type of uh, question forum uh, at least once a week uh, once we get into the role of this, and those are going to be bigger uh, overarching questioning uh, questions that we'll pose rather than specific course content. Uh, a good way to kind of reflect on how we're doing on Online in, in the lab. Virtual office hours. Uh, twice a week I'll be holding uh, virtual office hours. Uh, one is going to be in the morning, one is in the evening. Uh, Tuesday morning I'll be holding a two hour session from 10 a.m. till noon. Then on Thursday uh, from 5 until 7. Those are informal. Um, you're able to come to those and pop in, either get clarification on content or uh, ask questions about the program or if you're bored and just want a place to hang out, that's fine too. Typically, turnaround feedback. That's a big question I get because uh, so many things are slowed down at the college now because we're not all back on campus. So turnaround and feedback during the week, Monday through Friday, I'm gonna be on here all the time with you guys. I intend to make sure that uh, we're gonna monitor uh, anything in a discussion board several times a day, and I'm also gonna make sure that if you send me a message, I should get back with you in no later than two days. I may ask that you again, reach out to me by a phone uh, and leave a voicemail. I check my voicemail regularly, but I don't always have my phone right at my hand because I have my children here. So kind of keep that in mind that if you leave me a message, that's the fastest way to get back with me. Last part is we're all new to online learning. And so as we start to post things to discussion boards or to chat rooms, um, we want to make sure you understand how to interact with one another. And so there's a link here in your syllabus that'll take you to NetEquip, which is basically just the, the things we want you to make sure that you understand when we're, when we're dealing with online coursework, um, how are we actually going? And it just kind of goes over some of these things, right? Remember to be human, adhere to the same, uh, same standards or behavior online that you would apply in real life. Um, know where you are in cyberspace, kind of know your place, because we oftentimes act differently online than we would face-to-face, -face, and uh, we know that can be counterproductive to your learning, and we want to avoid that. Get back here to our syllabi. So that's kind of the things about communication that I wanted to touch base on. Just focus on those. The rest of this, the uh, course participation policy is important here. Just like if you were in a face-to-face -face class, participating is essential for your success. We want to make sure that you're going to continue to interact. So in order to get full credit for your assignments and for participation, um, you're going to have to be involved regularly. You can't just be a wallflower uh, and just get your lessons done and call it good. We still need to communicate. You need to be part of that process in order to earn that grade. Consistent failure to participate in this class is going to result in me dropping you from the course, but we've got to make sure that you're actively engaged or we need you to exit the program. Part of that participation happens in Zoom. Um, we have a standard policy uh, in our handbook for attendance, and we're going to maintain that uh, attendance based on the new requirements for the state and the program that we've outlined in each syllabi for uh, each course. There's going to be one primary addendum to that uh, to me, um, for the summer of 2020. The addendum reads, um, due to the nature of this course being offered online only in COVID-19, additional coursework may be prescribed uh, by the course instructor in lieu of Zoom virtual classroom participation with appropriate documentation of learning objectives and competencies. Uh, here's the key part, guys. This is only to allow for necessary flexibility in extenuating circumstances, not student scheduling conflicts. Uh, written permission is needed from the instructor along with the coaching and counseling form for completion and requirements uh, for completion. Uh, the primary goal behind this, guys, is going to be to uh, document that what we've done. Uh, now, with that being said, uh, I, I'm open to allowing for some flexibility, knowing that some of you have a strange work schedule, uh, and I do have office hours to help you, but it is, again, something that you and I need to work out individually uh, and then document if, as that process goes through. Uh, that should not be a regular occurrence uh, in lieu of any class. Roster requirements for completion for the program, these are the same as what they were before. You need to maintain it 80% or higher overall. Uh, earn passing uh, grades in each class, complete your portfolio, complete your uh, clinical requirements, including the specific hospital and uh, clinical agency rotations and your internship. Um, grading scale, you can see is here. Um, grading scale remains the same. You must maintain at least an 80%. That's a minimum, pardon me, minimum of a C minus. We are still going to um, monitor and evaluate your effective domain uh, of learning. For your effective vein, uh, domain evaluation, we're going to be looking um, at evaluating your behavior. This is oftentimes very difficult to do in an online setting because of the uh, context of the course and 
the form of communication. Because we are hosting um, some Zoom sessions for our virtual classroom, uh, and we're still maintaining the simulation and lab component once we are able to come back to campus, uh, I think we'll be able to maintain that without any problems. So just be aware that we are going to continue to maintain evaluation of your professional behavior. Um, the command structure will remain intact. Obviously, we've had to kind of alter the way that we utilize it, and I'm sure there'll be new ways uh, that we can improve upon that, and I'm open to ideas and suggestions from the group. Method of instruction, I outlined everything because we don't know exactly what's going to happen moving forward, and I want that flexibility. Um, uh, ADA requirement, physical ability, physical demands, all that remains the same. Change in syllabus. Obviously, this can happen um, for any reason. We can change uh, the need to the syllabus uh, to kind of fit the course to be, as we deem it appropriate. The first thing you're going to look at here is going to be your assigned coursework. Um, I'm classifying it by week like we always have, but I integrated the course success plan to help uh, streamline this process for you so you're not having so many documents to pull up online. Um, at any rate, you'll have an online lesson typically each week. Um, the online lesson for um, gynecology in this class is uh, starting um, now and will be open until 5.20 at 8 o'clock. Everything is due at, at the start of our Zoom class. That's the last part of the attendance. So the first part is for 75 points is due uh, before 8 p.m. Uh, on the night of our Zoom class. Our quiz as well, which is worth 100 points, that's again going to be due at uh, May uh, 20th at 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, this is your uh, EMS testing quiz. And then you have to obviously participate and have the proper Zoom attendance to earn that last 25% or 25 points. Each week will be based off a, a scale of at least of 100, pardon me, 200 points available um, and potentially more uh, if additional homework assignments exist. So just kind of keep that in mind that everything's due uh, before we have our Zoom classroom meeting. Because in that Zoom classroom, we're going to be doing a lot more advanced procedures. We're not going to be uh, lecturing in uh, courses like Paramedic 2 or Advanced Practice. We're going to be applying this the knowledge from the lesson. Each lesson will continue on, and you can see now that we've all identified the weeks, you'll have some time to do that. Again, kind of note that you've got a slow introduction here to your course. Uh, nothing's due until the 20th. Midterm. Is going to be need to be scheduled with me via email for a specific date and time. I'll have to give you more information about secure testing and the fact that we typically are going to uh, monitor you via Zoom. I got to work out some details in regards to that. But we will be observing you or requiring secure testing for your examinations, uh, if not uh, on campus potentially. And so the schedule will follow through like that. There is some homework assignments. There's a start triage quiz that you'll do. There's some uh, uh, research case study uh, components that we're going to have you submit things for. Uh, we'll walk you through those in a different video. Um, some hazmat completion. This is a huge um, uh, class here, about eight hours worth of online work that you'll need to complete for the hazmat component um, and so forth. And then again, uh, final exam, you can see the dates in which that it's open. So uh, a lot of boring stuff, but that's definitely going to get you the basis for uh, the course syllabi. Again, read each course syllabi. Make sure you're taking a look at it. The first thing you want to ask yourself before you uh, reach out for a question is, have I looked at and read the um, course material that I have? You can't screw Moodle up by clicking on it, so go for it. Attendance the same as it has been. Announcements, you'll see announcements are going to be here. In general, I'll post the primary announcements for the program here. Um, questions for advanced practice. We want you to post your questions here if you've got questions about the class or where, what do you need to do. I don't understand this specific lesson. Something's wrong. Post that there. If it's private, please email me. And then we have our uh, academy calendar. So rather than going ahead and just giving you a schedule or a course success plan, I wanted to try to do it a little bit more digital for you here, I guess. And that was done through Google calendars. Um, the cool part behind this is, is it's going to give you all the core information that you need in a calendar form. Um, I prefer the agenda um, because I can take a look at what's going on that way and get even more details if you need to. Uh, it's going to take me to my Google calendar here. And I can see the, the Zoom information, and I can uh, choose if I'm going to be joining um, or something along those lines. So, But again, I can take a look at this. You can also print this out. Um, obviously, since we're online, I can't guarantee you're going to be able to print it, but you can uh, pick some of the settings here, and it'll go ahead and it will uh, give you all that information and print it out. You can also print it out to a PDF if you want to have it in a static form. Uh, but that's all right there for you, so it's going to give you a, a good outline of everything that you're looking at, um, and and you'll be able to go right from there. I need to go, oh, i got to go to the Zoom stuff. I need more details, right? Get there now. I've got the calendar information. 
I can pull it up, I can see exactly what I've got, and I can get right to the zoom from one base location. Um, you can also take this and import this into your calendar, um, which is really cool as well. And I have built in reminders in that for you, so you can have it all uh, right in your phone if you want, or tablet. Khan Academy. Khan Academy is the other component that we're going to utilize for online learning. Um, uh, uh, you can click here on the Khan Academy account. It's going to take you to the specific Khan Academy account for that class, you're gonna need one for each one. So you wanna make sure you go through and actually get that accomplished of, um, for farm, cardio, and paramedic one, or probably paramedic two and advanced practice. Um, and you can see that those are gonna be right here once you're enrolled, and I can see the students that are automatically enrolled. Um, you'll be able to click on these and explore more uh, in detail lessons uh, that are required. Uh, but enrollment is necessary first, and then once you're enrolled, you'll be able to easily go ahead and get uh, additional um, coursework uh, within the lesson. It'll assign different videos. It does track uh, your videos and how much you watch them and at what speed you watch them and allows for me to grade it appropriately based on uh, uh, based on the length and requirements of the videos. So kind of keep that in mind. Student resources remain the same. Assignments. Um, you'll see that there's going to be your research case study assignment that's going to be in here. Um, I will talk more about this at a later date. And then you'll see the, the, the content below that we're working on in a modular format. So this is our gynecology, walks us through what our plan is. Um, we'll be able to go through and start our online gynecology lesson. This is gonna be the majority of the new stuff here. This is gonna guide you through a lesson and allow for you to work through um, at your own pace. Um, it is a time session. It does keep track of, of when you're in there, right? So if you pop out of it, it turns it off. So obviously I was in something and then had to move out of it. And I can take a look at it. Um, you're going to find they're going to look a little bit different between uh, paramedic advanced practice and then also the other um, um, archive server because it's just an older version of Moodle. But you've got learning objectives you can click on, links that'll pop up for you. Makes it really easy to get what you're looking at there. Uh, you'll have regular assigned reading from your textbook, along with additional articles that are here that you can click on and, and read over as well. And then you'll have an activity. The activity will typically be a video lecture, um, and then uh, you can go through and watch that. And then there'll be a PowerPoint that typically goes along with that video lecture. Um, these uh, lessons are linked up to make sure that you've actually had to watch everything or at least stare at a blank page for that amount of time. Um, it does time out and it does track your interaction during that time. So it's very difficult to get out, to skate out of doing this uh, by just plugging it away and letting it play. Um, so it does require some interaction. Still can download the, the PowerPoints and things of that nature as well. And then each lesson you're going to see, I've only completed 10% of this total lesson so far. Um, and so I can keep working my way through by clicking the next button. And then it will take me to the next page where I'm at here. So after the first one, here's an example of the Khan Academy assignment. I've got the specific topics and videos that I'm required to watch. Each one is a different length. Um, and then I'm going to actually have to click this link to get to my site and then join the class. If I haven't already joined it, it'll force you to join. Uh, and then you can start watching those videos and interacting with those lessons. Um, as you do that again, it does track it. So it's not something you can uh, uh, just uh, click through and be done. It does require you to interact and it does log those things. Um, you can push through that through Moodle. Obviously it's, a, it's an outside source that we're utilizing. Again, my uh, increase is now at 10%. And then it's going to take me to a case study. And in a case study, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually fill out all the information here uh, according to the case study, right? So we'll say case study answer, something like that. Um, and it's just you're going to answer it, right? I'm going to go through, I'm going to grade these, and I'm going to give you the uh, proper points based on the correct answers uh, that are associated. It'll take me through an assessment and management lesson. And then again, there's an activity. Once I've completed watching the video and I've read through the material that's on the page, it's very important that you stop to read the material. Um, it's going to ask me a question here, uh, and I need to make sure that I answer it correctly in order for me uh, to be able to continue. And I'm going to say, OK, submit. Now that I got it correct, I can continue. And it will stick me in that loop until I either hit five limits, five attempts, and then it will shut me off and move me past it, 
or uh, when you will not get the points for that section, that will affect your grade. So it's important that as you look through this, you work through it, take your time. You get up to three, you need to put in at least three hours for this. That's just an example of one question though. And again, that's gonna be in between some of these lessons that's referred to as a lesson activity. There was something important that we did. There's additional stuff, there's more reading. These I'm trying to make sure that they're more scholarly, uh, that they're more associated with uh, PAs or med school or physician, ER physicians, things of that nature that kind of take a look at what happens just beyond the ambulance. Obviously, it's practical to what we're doing still. Um, and then it will go through the course content uh, as needed. Now, I've gotten through a lot of stuff, but I'm still only 18% of the 100% way, way through. Now I got another question. I've got to be able to answer this properly in order to get through this. I'm going to show you what happens if I keep getting it wrong. I've got four attempts remaining, right? It doesn't let me do anything else but continue. And it will continue to count down. those attempts until either I get it correct or I run out of attempts. And I have one final attempt remaining and it's incorrect. And now, and so you can see, I've answered them all incorrect. I can't, there, I didn't get any of those points because I just tried to fly through that section. I didn't stop to look things up. When you get that moment to refresh, take that time to refresh and go from there. Um, and then it takes me on to my next question and continues to push me through the remainder of the questions that are associated with that section of the lesson. Once I'm to the end, at the end it will give me the code, passcode, for that exam for e and EMS testing. There'll be a gynecology uh, quiz, pardon me, that'll be in there and I'll need to use that code to get in. Again, I'm required to use secure testing. I also need to make sure that I that I maintain uh, my proper uh, time in Khan Academy, right? Because that'll also add to my grade. Once you're through, it'll actually tell you what your grade is, and it will pipe it into the grade book. And until I finish grading it, uh, until I put in your time on Khan Academy and can document that, uh, you, you know, you'll earn the grade that you see there, and that typically is not going to be very uh, very effective. Each page is going to be worth some time. It's going to be worth some um, points. So I hope that kind of helps with some of this lesson. I, I'm not going to keep working through it. Uh, it should continue to allow for you to continue to work through it. You can see there's a number, and you can kind of see exactly what's there. So it'll take you to all those next menus based on uh, where you're at. And so you can actually go through and you can you can get that. Now, and again, I'm, even though I've got the quiz, right, I can jump around wherever I want. I can go back and forth. I can do what you can. You're learning whatever way you want. What's going to happen is, um, you know, I only get one shot at this quiz, I guess. But uh, I've only got 21% of this lesson completed, and that lesson is going to be worth 75 points. So um, that's the part I want you to make sure you recognize here is you got to earn those full points, and you have to do well at it in order to get that 75 points. Um, again, you have to do well on your quiz, right? And you have to make sure that you're actively engaged in Zoom. So it's a, it's a each part is being graded individually, uh, as you can see in the syllabus. Once we get things moving a little bit more, it'll make more sense in the gradebook. Everything else remains the same, right? Uh, same stuff that's in the lesson, it's just in a different spot. Some of the videos are not, Those are a lot of those videos are all new. Um, but you can see that the other things that we have coming up are not available. Content will be available week by week. Uh, and that's going to be how we're going to do it. We're going to open up little by little uh, to give you more. I don't want you working ahead. That's not effective on online learning. Um, you'll also notice that once you've actually completed something, um, either you can check it completed or, like in the case of the lesson, you can't check it, right? Um, uh, once you've completed it and you've earned the grade and you put the time in, it will be checked. Okay. Um, the rest of these, you can say that they're just square boxes. They're not dotted. Uh, right, that's the difference between these two. These are easily done. You say when you're done with them, yep, I've looked at each one of those things and you're good to go. That's really what I'm wanting to make sure that you guys see as you can track your performance, just like a success plan would be. So for this, you'll need to go to moodlearchive.kellogg.edu. 
And it's important you spell it right. <laughs> Once you're in here, it's going to be the archive for this year, right? So, so nothing in the college has ever lost. It's just moved around. And so um, in order to get into the older style Moodle, you still have to log in. Put your login information there. And boom. Now everything that I had access to before, I have access to again. So let's take a look at Cardiology 2. Cardiology 2, you're going to see these are going to look a little bit different because I kept them all to the new format that I'm uh, implementing. So um, you get a banner out at the top, a course description, and then contact information for your instructor. This is very important, especially when we're learning online. Um, syllabus and course schedule, you can see that, that it's going to be there. You'll, uh, you look through that, we'll talk about it in each course. Everything else remains the same. Right, calendar, Khan Academy is needed, all that other good stuff. Let me switch to student. Um, you're going to see that the only thing that's going to show up is going to be what I'm letting you see right now. Um, there's not even going to look like there's any additional coursework. It, yes, it is there. Um, it is just uh, we're going to pace ourselves as we go back through this. Um, in the next two weeks, we'll be talking about cardiology, the 15 lead, and then left bundle branch blocks and the QMIs. And so um, we're going to be talking to uh, every other class, and then you're going to have the rest of it here. The lesson will happen in Zoom. There will be no additional lesson that's needed to complete for cardiology or pharmacology, just the paramedic courses uh, and the pediatric course. In essence, that's what you're going to be working with, guys. Uh, you can see that you've got a lot of resources here online, um, a lot of different ways that you can interact with us. Uh, I'm hoping that the lessons are going to be interesting. We get some Zoom time. Uh, and then I'll also be introducing our new simulation, uh, virtual simulation software. Uh, it's going to be really cool as far as uh, working uh, in groups and individually uh, to do that with Sims Online. And then also uh, in the lab, as well as completing your pediatric skills and pediatric class later in the semester. Uh, as we go through. So uh, I look forward to our time uh, here together and uh, online and face to face. And hopefully we can get through this and get us back on track and uh, get you where you need to be.